Welcome to Opalash TV. I'm in Hong Kong together with Jessica McCarroll. Jessica is the co-chief investment officer of Silverhorn Investment Advisors, and she has been in Asia here in Hong Kong since 1990. Jessica, tell me a bit of your background and from your perspective, how has Asia developed since 1990? Well, I started my career in 1987 at O'Connor and Associates in New York, and it was an options market making firm that gradually got morphed and became UBS. And they sent me then to London, and then I found my way to Hong Kong with Solomon Brothers when they sent me out to run their equity proprietary trading desk in 1990. In 1991, I joined the hedge fund industry, initially with IFM. In 2003, I co-founded Lynx Arbitrage with Leslie and Murray, and we started our own business in the Asian hedge fund space. And in those days, there weren't that many of us, and we were the only females in the industry, save a few of us. And at the time, we saw an opportunity in volatility arbitrage in Asia, similar to what I did in my former life at O'Connor. In Asia there was a, an opportunity to arbitrage the retail uh, with a professional and to act as almost a middleman between those two. So we started off doing that, did very well, sort of 2003, 2004, and then sort of things started to get a bit more difficult sort of when more entrants came into the market. So I think what happened was in the mid-2000s, the Asian hedge fund industry started to take off. Arbitrage really was pretty dead by then. It's arbitrage in the true sense. So, you know, I think people started to make more money after 2005 taking more risk. And so we continued to run Lynx Arbitrage and with, at the time we also developed a model that measured liquidity flows globally because we believed throughout the region the biggest risk was liquidity. And as soon as liquidity dried up, there would be a vacuum and there would be sort of a left tail event. So we developed a proprietary model that, that measures this. And then used it in our hedge fund, which helped us through 2008, and also used it in segregated accounts, which we managed tail risk for family offices. We were quite successful with a Lynx arbitrage fund. We had sort of very low volatility returns, steady returns. And in 2007, with our risk on, risk off model, our liquidity model, we were able to pick up the change in sentiment in the markets. And we actually did very well really just picking up the fact that markets were going risk off. And in, unfortunately, in 2008, even though we were doing well, the rest of the market wasn't. So we had mo uh, monthly liquidity. We didn't have any gates, side pockets. We didn't need them. It was a very liquid fund. So when we got redemption requests, we honored them all. Unfortunately, it took away most of our assets. So we decided to shutter that business, return all the money, and focus on running segregated accounts. And that was in 2009. Jessica, tell us, what are you doing now at Silverhorn? Silverhorn was established in 2010 as a financial services boutique to provide superior investment returns to family and multifamily offices. It's really three streams of revenue, wealth management, asset management, and private equity. I was brought in the beginning of this year to head up the asset or, or work with the asset management division. Our primary focus right now is launching the Silverhorn Dynamic Relative Value Fund, and we're launching in mid-June. We, um, it's a fund, it's a quantitative relative value fund that seeks to exploit anomalies between pairs of equities in the Asia Pacific region. We have a quantitative stock selection model that we developed ourselves about three years ago and we really look to isolate 
pairs of stocks in the same sector, the same country, the same exchange that have diverted from, from the, diverted from the mean. So we're looking for a reversion to the mean strategy. Now from our history at Lynx, we recognize that all mean reverting strategies have one, especially in Asia, one big risk, and that's liquidity. Because once liquidity leaves the market, things don't act normal. And when things don't act normal, your mean reverting strategies go the wrong way. So we taken our, our risk on risk off model, our liquidity model we developed at Lynx, and that tells us the temperature of the market. So if the market is green, it's risk on, and mean reverting strategies work very well. If markets are sort of unstable, but not, we're not seeing a lot of money being moved around globally, then it's an amber or a yellow signal. And we still keep our mean reverting strategies on because you can still make very good money. But when the model goes red, then it means risk is off. And that means pretty much all bets are off. And we've had a few signals like this since 2008, 2008 being the, and 2007 being the, the longest and the largest, few in 2009 and 2010, a very big signal in 2011, and the last red signal being in June of 2012. So when you get a red signal, what that means is that all bets are off in terms of reversion to the mean strategies. And what we do is we go to cash in our mean reverting long short strategy and we put up to up to 5% of NAV into options premium. And options premium, this is very similar to what we've been doing or exactly what we've been doing for our tail risk accounts is that we target really macro options on different asset classes which usually respond to a risk off event. So things like bonds, US treasuries, bonds, currencies, Aussie dollar, Japanese yen, and sometimes commodities, although recently that relationship has not, has not been um, trustworthy. Tell me more about your team within the asset management or your fund management operations. In our, the asset management division, there's, there's a core group of us that's three that's managing the relative value fund. That's me, Simon Cabells, and Jeff Palmer. Um, Jeff Palmer's been working with me since the Lynx Arbitrage, so nine years now. And Simon's been working with both of us for two years. We all have a mathematical background, albeit in different ways. Jeff is more of an academic, I'm more of a trader, Simon's sort of a mix of both. And we each cover different parts of the fund. Jeff runs our models. Simon looks at really the relative value side, the equity pair side, and I specialty is more because of my background in options. With my, uh, my fund management experience, I really oversee what Jeff and Simon do on the dealing side. Jeff oversees what we do on the mathematical side, and Simon oversees what we both do in terms of trading and in terms of the equity side, so the analysis side on the equities. Tell us more about the opportunity set that your fund is targeting. Our target return for a relative value fund is 10 to 12 percent per annum net of fees. We have weekly liquidity. We're, we're really almost, you know, we're almost like a cash plus plus type of fund. Um, we're completely non-directional. Our net exposure is plus or minus 5%. There's no imported beta, again, because everything is same country, same sector, same exchange. And when we do put on options, when risk is off, we don't spend any more premium than 5%, which is, is usually it's sort of around 2.5%, 3%. Um, so we're really targeting those investors that are looking for yield. I see a lot that, that there's been an asset allocation from bonds and from credit into quality equity, which are high dividend yielding stocks. We think that we offer something 
a little bit better than that in the sense that we're non-directional and we offer a yield that's in excess of what you would get on a dividend yield in a stock. So we're really going for that segment of the market. Tell us about the investors that okay. you know, are interested in this. Okay. Our investor base at Silverhorn are really multifamily offices and family offices. Um, these are a lot that used to perhaps invest through fund of funds pre-08 or perhaps they invested directly, but in general they went through a fund of funds. And these are people that are now wanting to invest directly into hedge funds. The opportunity that we offer that perhaps is different than you might get in Europe and the US is that our universe is smaller. We look at equities in Japan, Hong Kong, Singapore, Korea, and Australia. Really markets that we can short without too much risk. The universe is smaller, but the opportunity is greater. Stocks tend to fluctuate for different reasons than they do in the West. You get a lot more retail participation. Retail partic participation causes anomalies. Anomalies cause, create opportunity. And that's really why our hit rate on our relative value is, you know, above 60-40. Whereas your hit rate generally in the West is sort of 55-45. So we get higher return, but our universe is smaller. So our capacity is smaller. Really the sweet spot in terms of assets under management for this strategy is about 250 million. In 2003, we started Link. Really there were four of us and that's what you did in those days. Now it's a different story. Post 2008 crisis, you can't do that anymore. It's, it's very, the barriers to entry are so much harder. At Silverhorn, we found a group of, of people that have, are like-minded and also provide a, an infrastructure that we couldn't build ourselves. So not only technological infrastructure, but also human infrastructure. Silverhorn has a fantastic uh, compliance team, risk management team, and trading operations team. Um, we feel that we can concentrate on managing money and raising money and really performing for our investors rather than having to worry about business risk.